stop and smell the flowers if you like to climb the trees. Hello and welcome to the Beautiful Things channel. Today I'm going to do a little free tutorial for you and show you how to crochet these fab little poppies. Nice little brooches. I'm also going to show you how to put it all together super quickly and easily with the aid of a glue gun and how to cover your very own fabric covered button. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. There is a written version of the crochet pattern down below that you can download in the comments, um, but I'm gonna talk you through the whole process from start to finish now. Now it should be said that this is a free tutorial, but we are not aiming to take away from the Royal British Legion Poppy Appeal, so please do make a donation to the Poppy Appeal. And if you are making these to sell in aid of the charity, please make sure that you make a donation for every single poppy that you sell. There'll be more information on that at the end of the video. A printed version of the pattern is available to download from our website. You can find the link down in the description. So let's get going. So here's what you're going to need to make yourself your very own poppy. So the first thing you want obviously is some yarn. I've just got some red and green here, red for the poppy, green for the leaf. Um, for the button center, you can use a really nice black button. I would suggest one with a shank because it's much easier to attach to your finished poppy. But if you don't have a black button with a shank, then you can use a self cover button, which is what I'm gonna use today. So I've got the button and the button back, a piece of black fabric. I've got a brooch back and I've also got the little template that comes with my covered button so I can make sure I cut out the right size. I've got a darning needle so I can obviously darn away those pesky ends and then to assemble the whole thing together what's really handy is a hot glue gun and some glue sticks. Now if you don't have those that's absolutely fine you can just needle and thread it um, but it is far quicker to be able to do it this way. The other thing you want to get is a small piece of felt if you are going to be using a hot glue gun because that's really useful just to tidy up all the messy bits on the back. So we're going to start by putting a slip knot onto our hook. Now I'm using double knit yarn and a four millimetre hook for this. And we're going to start by chaining two. One, two. Now in the last chain, we're going to work ten double crochets. So these are double crochets UK terms, so single crochet if you're used to American terms. So we're going to put 10 double crochets into that final chain. Now what this does by working this way is it leaves us a nice hole in the center which is gonna help us attach our button. So obviously if you've done a magic loop or you joined your two chains together or three chains together and worked into the center, you wouldn't necessarily get that hole in the middle and it would close up. So it's actually a really good way to make sure that you do have a hole in the middle to put the shank of your button in. So once you've crocheted your 10 double crochet, you're just going to slip stitch to the first stitch to enable that to close up and turn into a full circle. So for round two, we're gonna start by chaining one. And then in the first stitch, we're going to work three stitches. We're going to put a double crochet, a half treble, and a treble. So all three of those stitches were worked into the first stitch. Double crochet, half treble and treble. What they're doing is building the height of the top of our poppy. In the next stitch, we're gonna work two trebles, both in the same stitch. And in the next stitch, we're going to work three trebles, again, all into the same stitch. Now, 
Now in the next stitch we're going to work three stitches but we're going to go down this time. So we're going to do a treble, a half treble and then a double. Then we're going to slip stitch into the next available stitch. And that's completed what will be the bottom of your poppy. So it's the first half of that circle. And now to work the top half of this circle, we're going to repeat the pattern between star and star. So again, in this first stitch, this next available stitch after our slip stitch, we're going to do a double crochet a half treble and a treble. In the next stitch we're going to do two trebles in the next stitch we're going to do three trebles And then in the next stitch we're going to work our way down by putting in a treble, a half treble and a double crochet and then slip stitch in the next stitch to finish that round. So we've now got a symmetrical poppy to begin with, with a bottom and a top. Now we're going to move on to round three. So this is the bottom, so for round three we're going to work back this way around the top here. So we're going to chain one, we can turn our work so we're working into this top section. And in the top first stitch we're going to start again with our little rising group of stitches, so a double crochet a half treble and a treble. In the next stitch we're going to work just one treble and in the next stitch we're going to work two trebles. We're going to repeat between star and star four more times, so one treble and two trebles. One treble and two trebles. One treble. And two trebles. And one final time, one treble and two trebles. And then in the next stitch we're going to work a treble, a half treble, and a double crochet and slip stitch to finish. Now we're going to move on. This is still round three, but we're now going to be working along the bottom of our poppy. And in the first stitch, we're going to do a double crochet a half treble and a treble. Trebling into the next stitch. Two trebles into the next stitch. One treble into each of the next six stitches.
and then in the next stitch we're going to do a treble, a half treble and a double crochet and then slip stitch into that final stitch to complete your poppy and then you can fasten off. So you've got your top and your bottom of your poppy. You can then darn in your tail ends. Everybody's favorite bit of crochet. And we just literally want to hide them away. This one on the outside edge you might want to just bring it from the bottom section where it's joined just up into the top section of your poppy and that will just kind of bring the two together a little bit neater. So that's our poppy completed. Now we're gonna have a little cracker doing the leaf. So for the leaf, we're gonna work with some green yarn. And we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook and chaining nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now in the first stitch, so not the stitch where the loop on your hook is coming out, but the next one along, you're going to work a double crochet. Then you're going to work the following pattern all the way along the chain. You're going to do a half treble, then another half treble, working one stitch into each chain all the way along, then a treble, then a treble, then a half treble, another half treble, and then a double crochet in that last chain. Now this part of the pattern, it says we're going to turn. Now we're not going to turn in the truest sense of the word where we turn our work and work back along the row we've just created. We are going to turn like this so that we can work back down the opposite side of the leaf. Now the easiest way to think about this is to think of the chain that you crocheted as the vein in the middle of your leaf. So you've worked all the way up one side of your leaf, you're then going to work all the way back down the other side. So you're going to be placing your stitches into the opposite side of the chain. Now I find the easiest thing to do here is to crochet over my tail end. So I've got my tail end here and I'm going to just place it along the spine. So if I crochet over it, it will mean all my tail ends end up at the same end. Now working into what was that first chain again, but this time from the other side, you're going to work a double crochet, then a half treble, a half treble, you're just repeating that pattern, and a treble, another treble, a half treble, another half treble, and then finally a double crochet. And you should be back at your starting point at this point. 
Now you can just slip stitch anywhere into the very end just to finish off. Cut your tail end and fasten off. And you should have both your tail ends together at one end and a nice little curly leaf. So I leave my tail ends like this if I'm going to stitch them onto something. And if you're going to stitch your poppy together, then you want to attach your poppy leaf behind your poppy and you can just use your tail ends to just sew them in place onto the center back here. But because I'm gonna be gluing my poppy together, I'm just gonna cut them, but I'm gonna just leave them little stumpy, scraggy bits on the end. So if you don't know how to self cover a button, I thought I would show you quickly. Um, I'm gonna use a button covering tool um, and I will link all of these tools in the description down below. Please note that they may be affiliate links, doesn't mean they're gonna cost you any more to purchase them, but it does mean that we might gain a small percentage from their purchase. Okay, so we're gonna start by just drawing round our little template. Now most self-covering buttons, self-covered buttons, cover your own buttons, <laughs> however you pronounce it, um, come with a little template on the back of the packet that you can just cut round. So you can make sure that you're gonna cut the right size circle. So I'm gonna just cut that out, just roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you don't have a button covering tool, then you can run a little running stitch along the outside edge of your circle and draw it up like a little shower cap to pop over your button. But I have one of these clever little gadgets. They're really low cost and they're absolutely fabulous. I love them. And they come with all the different sizes for your buttons. And you're just gonna pop your little circle on top pop your button roughly in the center and push it down into the tool. And you can see it naturally curls up all of your fabric. And then I'm quite lucky, I've got nice long nails, so I find this quite easy to do just with my nails. But if you haven't, you can use a little sharp pair of scissors and just push all that excess fabric into the back of your button. Then you're gonna take your button back and drop it on top like so and then this is where the magic comes in take your little plastic gadget and take the relevant size so this is a 19 mil button i'm using and just push it down you'll hear a little click give it a little wiggle and that will secure your button in and then you just pop it out because it's rubber and out comes your little self-covered button. Super quick and super simple. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is to cut a little circle of felt that is no bigger than the back of your poppy. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. If you've got a cutting machine, you could cut out a perfect circle if you really wanted to, but it doesn't need to be. As long as it's gonna cover the back of your poppy like so. And then it's time to get everything ready and fire up your glue gun. Okay, so once your glue gun's heated up, the first thing you want to do is blob a bit of glue on the back and position your leaf, first of all. So we'll just pop that down there so it's coming out of the side a little bit when you look at it from the front. Then you're gonna take your little circle of felt, put some glue onto the back of that, and pop that onto the back to cover up your leaf ends. Turn it back over. And then the reason we use a shank button is because we can pump a load of glue into that central hole there and then just post the shank down the hole and that will sit really nicely in there, like so. 
And then you need to be aware where the top and the bottom of your poppy is. So the traditional poppy has a larger top and a smaller bottom. And the reason you need to do that is because we need to make sure that we put our brooch pin in the right place. If you just put your brooch back smack bang in the centre here, all that will happen when you wear your brooch is it will just keep falling forward. So you want to make sure when you've got the top uppermost, lay it back down on the table and then open your brooch back. You can use a safety pin as well if you want, just put a little piece of felt across the safety pin, that's another way to do it. You're going to just put a little row of glue towards the top of your felt circle as the top of your poppy is facing away from you and just pop your brooch back down into that glue and again it will all just ooze up through the holes in the back of your brooch back and just leave your brooch open until the glue has dried. Any of these little tail ends, these wispy spidery bits, they will just pull off or if you really need to get rid of them just blast it with a hairdryer and they will all just melt away. As with all glue gun glue it dries really super quickly so you can then close your brooch back up and there we have it our nice poppy for Remembrance Day. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial as with everything that we do in aid of charity I would ask that you please do make a donation to the Royal British Legion if you are making these poppies I will put a link down below in the description likewise if you are making these to sell please do donate your profits to the charity what we don't want to do is to take away from the paper poppy appeal that is taking place and um, even if you buy a paper poppy for every poppy that you make that's another way that you can donate still to the British Legion but you're not taking away from the poppy appeal itself obviously this tutorial is not designed for you to make a profit out of the poppy appeal so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed the tutorial please do remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can see lots more tutorials all sorts of different crafts coming up over the next few months thanks for watching bye